to the Sunday kickback. We've just been watching Chelsea 1, Arsenal 1. Vinnie Perth alongside me. It was tight. It was tough. It was 100 miles an hour. And, well, ultimately, both sides probably a little bit disappointed to come away with just the point. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, probably a sense of disappointment in Arsenal. I think that that was really one that puts them sort of that win and holding on at the end would have put them right back in the title race. And for Chelsea, I felt the game was there for them. But ultimately, as much as there was a huge amount of intensity, it felt like there was something big on the line. At different stages, we lost a little bit of quality in, the, in Cole Palmer. A couple of touches just got away from our key moments and Arsenal feels like they're missing that centre forward who can just slot a simple goal in. So, look, it was moments of magic from Odegaard to set up the first goal and Neto done brilliantly for his goal. So, there was quality involved in it, but ultimately, um, a draw feels like it was a fair result. This game was very much in keeping with what we've seen from the top teams this season. And I said during commentary, it's, you can't take your eyes off it, but not a lot actually happens. Why is that? Why is it we're not seeing the same amount of attacking quality that we've seen in previous seasons? I think both. I think if you watch the Premiership football now, 4-4-2 disappeared out of the game, and in many ways it's still gone, but in that defensive shape, you could so if a team lines up across the back uh, or the edge of the box, their centre forward, they'll go into a 4-4-2 shape now. So many teams do this and there's probably 15, 20 yards. So they've cut out space and they've, they're have they trying to fill holes and they, they let the opposition have the ball, go side to side. And ultimately, you've got to come up with some moment of brilliance or somebody switching off. And um, and a lot of teams are cancelling each other out, but it's still being paid, played at 100 miles an hour. A lot of these players can, when they reach top speed, it's about 10 metres per second. So if they, they do that over 100 metres, it's, you know, 10 seconds, 100 metres, it's quite fast. and um, So we've got a lot of athleticism in the league. We've got a lot of uh, real like speed, power, everything about it. But ultimately, um, there's a lot of sh shapes and systems that are cancelling each other at the moment. It doesn't mean it's making for poor football. There's a lot of really good stuff in it. But it's getting harder to break down the top teams now. So four games without a win now for Arsenal in the Premier League. It's throwing a defeat in the Champions League to Inter Milan as well. They're nine points behind Liverpool at the top. What's gone wrong? Um, it's a mixture. Obviously, up until now, uh, a lot of injuries have hurt him. Uh, Udegaard has, has sort of been a big loss for him. He's come in today and he was just a little bit off. It would, they weren't able to get him on the ball as much as they would have liked it. Some of that's down to Chelsea's midfield. They're exceptional. Um, and um, ultimately, they had the same problem over the last number of years. Unless Arsenal have a top class striker, you go back to teams that win the Premiership, you look at Van Nistelrooy's goal, Drogsburg's goals, uh, Salah's goal, Aguero's goals, Haaland's goal now, and Arsenal don't have someone of that ilk. Yes, and I he's understand obviously the made, hard to find. He's, but he's made that decision, obviously, that he doesn't want that type of player, that he wants a Kai Havertz to lead the line. Yeah, or else he hasn't been. He hasn't got the, the budget or the finance or he hasn't found that type of player. And sometimes you just don't sign someone for the sake of it. Where you look at Chelsea and they've signed Jackson and as much as he's had some criticism at 22, 23, the difference is he gives Chelsea something different. He goes down the sides of people. He's always looking to, to create something where Havertz is just, yes, he's got some big goals at different stages, but he's playing more on the periphery of games as opposed to trying to do something different. So has to be something they have to fix and fix soon if they're going to get over that sort of line because you need you need to win leagues odd times there's a few exceptions but you want your striker going through 20 goal barrier doesn't feel like Havertz has that in him because it does feel like there's so much pressure put on the three behind Saka Martinelli Odegaard and you go back a couple of years and all three of those players got into double figures and if that were to happen again Arsenal would probably go very close but they don't even really have Fullbacks who are bombing forward consistently. So all of the creativity is is on those three. And do we see today actually the Chelsea, for large parts of the game, actually were able to control the three of them relatively well? Yeah, it were really tactically good game. So what Arsenal start to do this season is when they're on the attack, they play two centre halves and they play a line of three ahead of them. They play party in the middle of it and both fullbacks either side of them. So it's two three. And that is about taking control of the game. That's the slight change they've gone to tactically. Um, so when, when they win the back or, or they lose the ball, they've got people around the middle of the pitch. Makes them vulnerable down the wide areas. So for that to be for someone to become the king kingmaker in that team, it's obviously Udegaard, but also Declan Rice. And I use the example of Drogba and Van Nistelrooy, etc. He's got to now become 
the Gerard of Arsenal if they're going to go to the next side or the Paul Scholes, Frank Lampard. Um, but that's not him. He, he, he's, no, not, he's not that player. Of course he's he? not. But then where are you going to get enough goals from to go and win a league title? And that's the problem. We know Rice can score the odd goal here and there, but it feels like our Arsenal are halfway to something and halfway to nothing. And they've got to come up with a solution in that midfield because Saka was marshalled brilliantly by City recently in terms of their fullback uh, going in after him, and then Cucurella doing the exact same thing today. So Saka went off injured today, but for 70 minutes, Cucurella completely dominate them there was one or two instances Saka done really well Martinelli didn't really get a look in and as we spoke about Harvards is not giving them that sort of goal threat so it has to come from somewhere and when you spend uh, 90 odd 100 million then can Declan Rice become that he wants to play as an 8 that's what he speaks about he forced that issue with West Ham he feels like there's goals in him and he's one that probably has to go up another level or else the combination in midfield is off and there's not enough goals in it to supplement playing without a world-class striker. Do you see any way back for Arsenal? Yeah, no, it's early days yet. They've obviously a couple of, like, they could win the week Liverpool and play City and they make ground on both of them that week for argument's sake. Um, I think the international break will come at a good time for them. They need to get a couple of people back. They need to come away from and switch off from, the seems like there was a little bit of pressure on today. You could see Arteta, although he's always animated on the sideline, he was a little bit more today. I think if, if they'd have conceded a, a goal late in the game, that would have really hurt them. But it's a, it feels like, yes, they've got the players. They've just got the people to go up to the next level. And um, as you said, they don't have the fullbacks now who are going to get them uh, into games. So it has to be from what they have within. And it's ultimately going to be really difficult. The top two, albeit City, are faltering at the moment. You don't think that will continue. The top two just keep knocking out wins week in, week out. Yeah, so Chelsea and Arsenal, uh, exact same points, exact same records so far this season. Chelsea coming from a, a very different position and starting to rebuild again under Maresca. And fair to say they look like a team today. They look like they, they know what they're about. It wasn't perfect and they, you know a lot of the individuals probably didn't get to the level, particularly Cole Palmer who struggled to impose himself in the game. But actually you sort of look at Chelsea and their system and it feels like a manager who knows where he's going. Yeah, and I think that I was really impressed by them. I have been a couple of times. I've seen them this season. Again, Manoweki on, on the right or Neto on the left is a real, real threat. And they're trying to get those wings away, as we, we spoke about. Um, Gusto looks really good at fullback. He's keeping Reese James out of the team. They've got real strength and depth, as we all know. But the difference is this manager isn't making four or five changes a week. He's sticking to a settled team. Um, some of the players look like the players we thought they would be when you think of Fofana when he signed from Leicester he got that bad knee injury now he looks like a top class centre half it's argument that him or Cucurella who they signed for big money from Brighton our best player on the pitch and, and Cieto in midfield or Cieto in midfield was exceptional he looks like he was worth all that money they, they spent so there's a lot to like about them and um, uh, again if Jackson can hit the form we think he could do they can go on a great run. I think they'll make Champions League football this year. I think that's progression. Um, their, their own fans were talking about if we win today, we're back in the title race. I think that's a bit early for this for this team with all the changes they made. So it's it's a fascinating watch with Chelsea. Uh, before we let you go, while we were commentating on this at the Aviva Stadium, Drogheda United were winning the FAI Cup under Kevin Doherty and Derry City end the season, not even with any European football and knocked out of Europe this year by a team from Gibraltar fell flat in the title race end up finishing fourth in the league and then the underdogs win today as well uh, firstly for, for Drogheda and for, for Kevin Doherty and what an achievement it is for them yeah it's a remarkable achievement and um, it reminds me of I lucky enough to be involved in a similar situation a lot of part time stroke full time players in your club when Longford Town done something similar about 20 years ago and it is a, a remarkable achievement for them players in terms of how they've, they've done it. They've turned up in the big day. They're, they're, they've still got a relegation battle to win. But um, it was brilliant by Kevin and his, his team. And there's a bit of togetherness there. And um, there's a lot to like about what they've done. Um, the, 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 the set up tactically, Kevin got everything right today in terms of the way he played with two up front and, and tried to exploit Derry down the sides. And ultimately, Derry have just fallen short in the big day. and. It was lacklustre for Derry over the last month, and um, dropped it. it's it's brilliant for that club. Um, they they got a bit of bad news around funding, but it feels like they're trying to do the right things in the background. So, uh, marvelous achievement for Kevin Doherty. Duffer is manager of the year because he won the league, but Kevin Doherty is second to him after what he's achieved with that club. And what next then for Derry and Rory Higgins? Ten points from their last eleven games in the league, 
beaten today and has felt like a manager under pressure for quite a while. I know he's someone you've an awful lot of time for, but do you do you see him still being the dairy manager at the start of next season? Um, look, for, I suppose it's credible, difficult comment comment on someone I have huge respect for being critical of Rory this season because that's that's effectively my job now in terms of giving an honest view on it. It's been a really difficult season. I don't think the players have achieved the level that they should have. The money and, and the money they spent on a lot of them players hasn't worked out. Um, they've fallen short. They haven't qualified for Europe. And um, there will be a lot of questions. There's a lot of noise around the club. Um, I think Higgins is an outstanding football man. Uh, but they've got big decisions to make there. And um, Look, it's been a difficult 12 months and so for Rory and his family so look very difficult to comment on other than say um, it's a long way back for that club now because I think the the way they finish the season there will be ra ramifications for that in terms of the squad players leaving players wanting to play European football it's a long way back for Derry City and um, you feel for a lot of that people there you know thanks Vinny